Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Adam. This is Biowinth News Interview. Is it time to say goodbye to Homo habilis? Professor John Hawkes addresses the arguments for and against removing this taxon from our genus in a recent story posted to Medium. Some researchers advocate for reassigning Habilis' genus because certain morphological features are more similar to Australopithecus than to Homo. These researchers point specifically to the smaller cranial capacity and body size of Homo habilis compared to other members of the genus Homo. Professor Hawks argues against this reformulation of our genus, suggesting instead that a larger suite of characteristics be taken into account when assigning names. He also expressed concern that such a change could result in a chain reaction of alternative genus names being assigned to individual hominin species throughout the phylogeny. Let us know what you think in the comments, or head over to the original post on our Facebook page and join in the discussion. Pain-free and euphoric are some of the last phrases many women would use when describing childbirth. But could using these positive descriptors lead to a labor experience that is deserving of such description? One author, Millie Hill, has proposed that it is the fear of pain, rather than the pain itself, which makes childbirth such a daunting experience. Hill posits that women may be able to improve the overall experience of labor by highlighting the positive aspects rather than negative perceptions, which she suggests become internalized by women. Hill states that on average, about 23% of the time in labor is painful, while the other 77% consists of pain-free labor, potentially even being euphoric for some women. The article caused quite a stir on the Facebook group, with many commenters drawing on personal experience. Many believe the title, The Myth of Painful Childbirth, undermines the experience of labor, as they cited their own undeniably real pain. Others emphasize the importance of recognizing each labor as a unique process. Our big story today is on ethics in conducting research with human participants. Researchers are used to getting ethical approval from their home institutions before embarking on research projects. But now, the San people of Southern Africa have developed their own code of ethics that researchers will have to abide by. The code is based on the pillars of respect, honesty, justice and fairness, care and process. Each pillar represents a specific set of guidelines researchers are required to follow with respect to their conduct toward the San community. One expected outcome of applying this code is to give the San more oversight on the information published about them and how they are characterized. Another outcome will be the prioritization of mutual benefit to ensure participating San communities are treated as critical stakeholders in these projects. The San make clear that these community benefits take different forms and should be discussed directly with leaders before research begins. Linda Nordling, the author of the article in the journal Science outlining the new code, reminds us that the San are not the first indigenous community to develop ethical guidelines for researchers. Instead, they join Aboriginal Australians, Canada's First Nations, and Inuit communities in exercising more oversight regarding their involvement in outside scientific research. That's it for this edition of BioAnth News. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.